Welcome to The Silburn Show. I want to open today's show by looking at employability versus entrepreneurship. Trends would suggest that the generation is heading away from conventional 9-to-5 employment and towards multiple forms of employment, self-employment and entrepreneurship. The question is this, is it because it is a natural evolution of the workforce or that despite political gain reports, to the contrary, we are not recovering from the international financial meltdown of 2008 or alternatively that our government has cultivated an enough policy to allow for a thriving entrepreneurial sector. Which of the three is it? I'd love to hear your opinion. Are we heading toward the decline of the 9 to 5 and accelerating into the era of the entrepreneur and if so, why? Share your comments below or on Facebook, Twitter or Instagram with the hashtag SilverTV. Joining us today, we have Anthony Francis, a man with 20 years experience as a proactive and highly focused program manager and lead project specialist as well as founder of the newly formed Project Manager Essentials and author of the book Project Management Essentials for Non-Project Managers. Anthony, welcome to the show, sir. Thanks for having me. How are you doing? Well, thank you. How are you? I think we've got winter now, isn't it? Winter, we're into spring. <laughs> I was checking to make sure that you know where we're at, you know what I mean? I saw the sunshine outside earlier today and I said I was going to wear my shorts. <laughs> I don't think we're quite there yet, but we're <laughs> well, getting close. Well, you see, I'm, I'm, I'm a Jamaican by birth, so therefore I'm always... You know, they say you are where you are, you know, and my mind is in Jamaica. You know? Well, your mind might be in Jamaica, but we're here in um, South East London, so I'd just be a bit cautious. You mean Brexit land? <laughs> Brexit land. <laughs> I love Brexit. Uh, yeah, I think uh, uh, Brexit land or um, the land of uncertainty right now. Land of uncertainty, fantastic. Yeah. Well, it's interesting, this show, because it's about sort of a business element, which is one reason why I brought you here. And, but one of the first thing I want to ask you, Anton, is for those who don't know what is a project manager and how does it vary from a program manager, and what do the two job entitles? How could you explain or distinguish between a program manager and a project manager? Okay, so a project manager mm. uh, essentially is somebody who's got a, um, uh, a single project uh, that involves planning and execution. Mm. So they are responsible for, co for managing, coordinating that whole project from start to finish. Mm -hmm. Um, whereas a program manager, they tend to manage in a multiple program. So that has multiple projects underneath it, which yeah. means they have multiple project managers who mm -hmm. are reporting into them. So more of a strategic or transformational program for mm -hmm. the organization. So you, you sort of captured both of them in a certain sense? I beg your pardon? You sort of do both of them? Well, the, 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 job, the skills of the project manager means mm -hmm. that somebody who is a program manager, providing they have enough experience, would be able to do a role as a program manager. Yes. But it is, a, it is a more senior role. One of the things is that we've seen a significant growth in the area of project management over several years with a host of teaching and certification institutions growing. What would you say has fueled this growth within this sector? Okay, I think what's really um, become quite apparent over the last couple of years is yeah. certainly with project management as a discipline, mm -hmm. is project management in, encompasses a number of key skills. Those skills involve um, planning, execution, controlling, um, financial, uh, mm -hmm. So I think what's happening, a lot of companies now have realised that having those sort of key skills uh, is quite important. And as a consequence of that, a number of organisations, teaching organisations, yes. have now picked up on that and thought, right, let's actually get in place an accreditation programme mm -hmm. to make the project management um, area or discipline more formalised. Yeah. So there, is, there has always been an, a number of key project management certifications, PRINCE 2 for 1, mm -hmm. and, and there's also one called... Um, uh, the APM, Advanced Program Manager yes, um, yes. This discipline. Mm -hmm. So there are a number of project management certifications out there. But as you say, over the last few years, mm -hmm. there's been um, a plethora of other organisations, yes. teaching organisations, who have come up with their own version and standards. And what do you think has really um, fueled that, if anything? Well, I think there's two things. One is the fact that um, certainly with certification comes um, income. Companies yes. can charge quite a lot uh, of money to f for someone to be seen as a qualified practitioner yes. in something like project management, which has become quite popular now. Mm -hmm. So you so you have that, but also I think with with the certification comes the accreditation that people feel they are um, 
it, it, it confirms their role. Yes. It, it um, enables them to take a course which gives them that, uh, for want of a better word, the badge of confirmation that mm -hmm. they are skilled in that particular discipline. Mm -hmm. um, in the same way that if you were to do another professional examination or a course like a, a teaching qualification, um, and you had a degree in that, or, or you, would, you were particularly qualified in that, people would, would recognise you for that particular profession. And in this particular profession as well, a lot of it is business oriented at the same yeah. time. Now, in the advent, I know we, we just um, funnily mentioned Brexit a while ago, but it is something which is um, upon us. Um, not triggered yet, but upon us. How do you see the, the advent of Brexit and the potential of Brexit playing a role in this whole area, with businesses generally? Well, I think at the moment, there's still a certain amount of uncertainty around Brexit. Mm. So I think it, it, uh, I'd have to sort of, whatever I say, um, say it with a bit, of, a, a bit of caution, because mm. clearly at the moment, we don't know what the outputs of the negotiations are going to be. Yes. But certainly with regard to Brexit, um, I think any business now, the one thing they look for is certainty. Yes. And at the moment, there is uncertainty, because we don't know what that means in terms of how businesses can go about interfacing or mm. engaging with companies abroad. And also it means that certain companies, even in our own land here in the UK, may be slightly less um, inclined mm. to want to get involved and commission certain mm. projects, mainly because they're wondering, well, I'm not sure what's going to happen on the other mm. side. Mm. So I think the Brexit negotiations at the moment has caused the uncertainty that businesses don't like. But, but at the same time, uh, before the, the, the Brexit vote or before they had the certainty to a certain extent of March the 30th, where they will trigger Article 50, people are looking for certainty mm -hmm. to say that, okay, we're going to go through with Brexit. Trigger so they got the level of certainty, but now the, the goalpost is pushed back now, where it's a, well, there's no real uncertainty because we don't know what's going to happen at the end. Yep. Can we be sure about what's going to happen? At the end? I mean, aren't business supposed to be dynamic um, entities to a certain extent that evolve? Well, yeah, businesses are dynamic and they mm. do evolve, but yeah. they also need a, an, an element whereby they know what they're planning for. Yes. Um, and if they can't plan mm. or they don't know what the overall picture or the landscape looks like, it's very difficult for them to then invest. Mm. So if somebody, for example, wanted to invest in a major project yes. that involved um, millions of pounds and perhaps took on loads of people, yeah. uh, if there wasn't that certainty around, well, actually, I'm going to have the customers to mm. pick up the, the slack in terms of what I'm building this particular project mm -hmm. for, uh, then it creates that, well, should I then invest now? Should I, should I wait? Should I sort of see how the landscape is in the next six months' time? Yes. So, and that's the sort of uncertainty that businesses don't like. And I think that's the element that I'm, I mean by um, the Brexit environment now has created that sort of a um, uh, space and uncertainty yeah, yeah. where people aren't really sure what the next step should be. And that, in, and that therefore uh, impacts on people's um, decision to invest and what businesses they want to inv um, get involved in. Um, as one who's following Brexit, uh, one, one would sort of sense from what you're saying and, and some of the reading is that there will be somewhat of a fallout during the whole process of this Brexit negotiation, two years, three years, because as you rightly said, persons are stopping. I'm gonna invest, let me just hold for a second. Yeah. So therefore, Britain will have a Follow to a certain extent? Well, I think what they will have is clearly with the whole issue around mm. Brexit and the, and the negotiations that are now underway uh, and the uncertainty which is obviously now in the air, yeah. um, there will certainly be some uncertainty. There will be some areas where people are going to be wanting to know, well, you know, should I do this or should I do that? Yeah. But I think businesses still need to do their business. Yes. So they're still going to have to sort of maybe um, take that chance and maybe sort of, you know, look into the future and think, well, okay, should I still invest or mm -hmm. should I still recruit these people? Yes. Should I still go forward? Yes. Um, because ultimately they can't sit and wait for what happens, you know, six months, 12 months, two years down the road. Yes. Because as you say, businesses are dynamic. They, they're, um, they, they're evolutionary, yeah. they have to be seen to be growing, um, shareholders demand mm -hmm. that they are seen to be growing, and that means they can't, they can't sit on the fence and yes. wait, so they have to make a decision. Be, yeah. To follow on from that, Anthony, you have had a successful business and are now a successful business owner. As such, have there been any noticeable implications, good or bad, from a business owner perspective, personally? Uh, personally, I think what it's done, are you referring back to the Brexit again? Well, it's, it's a whole environment because as, as we said, before even Brexit started, there was also this move at the same time from 2008 
with the fallout, with the financial meltdown, yep. people are actually moving away from this, or they never had this level of confidence that they had before, leaving a job, sorry, leaving from school, nine to five factor. Well, I think that the difference <coughs> between the environment that maybe I think you're referring to is mm. that now there are more opportunities because as a consequence of things like the internet. Mm. Um, whereas before in the past, the way that businesses used to operate was more, was more a case of you'd, you'd have to either build the business um, brick by brick. It was yeah. more of a, a, a sort of a, a conventional business operation. Yes. Now you're finding that you can have a business where you can be an online entrepreneur. Yes. Um, certainly you look at some of the businesses now which are in the top 10. Mm. You have the Ubers, you have the Deliveroo's, you have the, um, the, the Amazons, mm. the, um, the, the Facebooks. Mm. These are all online portals yes. that, you know, 10, 15 years ago possibly wouldn't have been come into existence if it wasn't for the, the, the opportunities that have been created yes. by this new globalization mm. and the interconnectivity that we now find ourselves in. So I think <coughs> what that has done, that has made people more aware yes. of what they can do. And as a consequence, they are now being more selective in terms of, well, this is what I would like to try and do. Yes. And whereas there were barriers before to getting information, that information mm. is now readily available. Mm. So you can create a website that website can be quite professionally looking in terms of its, yes. its, its um, appearance. Mm -hmm. And it means you are competing exactly the same with any other website out yeah, there. Yeah. So that then takes away that whole um, boundary of, um, of the sort of areas of, yeah. oh, who, is this a one man band? Is it a, mm. is it a multinational? Who are they? So, but of course, behind those businesses, you still have to have the fundamentals. Yes. You can't just be um, offering a service that doesn't then provide good customer service, mm. um, good follow on, et cetera. But it does mean that the playing field has now been leveled right across the okay, board. Okay, <clears throat> listening to you as well, it seems like you're at a position now whereby you want to give back because you teach practical uh, project management essentials at Bromley. Well, Bromley I do. Quarter tell, yeah. yeah, I mean, I do um, one of two or three things. One is I work with organisations yeah. who are involved in um, business change in order mm -hmm. to provide them with the support to make those changes possible. I also work with um, organizations who, want, who, who are looking for mm -hmm. um, their internal staff members to gain that best practice. Yes. And I also provide the um, workshop training, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. at the mm -hmm. Bromley Court Hotel for people who want to get into project management yes. and perhaps don't know what, which road to go down. So yes, I mean, they're the sort of three areas that I've um, managed to find a niche into. Tell us, Anthony, about project managers' essentials. Well, Project Managers Essentials mm -hmm. is a company that I've um, set up in the last sort of couple of months now. Mm -hmm. um, as you mentioned right at the start, I've done 20 mm -hmm. years in project management, yes. um, working with a number of different um, uh, companies, yes. both in the public and private sector. So this really is an opportunity for me now to uh, use those skills that I've um, learned over the years mm -hmm. and really create a, a sort of area that I feel would benefit companies mm -hmm. um, long term in terms of giving um, them the experience I've gained in terms of how to go around doing, <coughs> excuse me, project management and implementation yes. in a more practical sense. Yes. Um, that's not to say that the certifications that you just talked about earlier mm -hmm. aren't important, but sometimes people perhaps, and the organizations don't have the, the funds to send people on these courses yeah. because they're not cheap. And um, what they're looking for is people to come away from a, a course that I give with the practical hands-on experience right. to be able to go and implement and work on a project uh, straight away. So, so you, will you give some of that ingredient here or you want them to come to um, Bromley? <laughs> <laughs> I'm more than happy to give away a, a few nuggets of, um, of inspiration uh, to, anyone, to any of your listeners who are interested I'll, in project I'm going to come back to you after a break where we talk about some of your most memorable project and success, um, Anthony. But I want to delve in some more. But ladies and gentlemen, I want to take a quick break and come back to you. We'll talk to Anthony a bit more about the whole aspect of business and success. Yeah, so it's a key book there, yeah. Yeah, so Project Manager Essentials, um, uh, the course, mm -hmm. what people get when they come on this course is if they are new to project management, if they've been involved in a, in a, in a project themselves, but they, are, they, have, they have come into it purely by the fact that mm -hmm. they happen to be the person who someone has says, we'd like you to take over this task. Yes. And they haven't formally had any previous background in terms of methodology mm -hmm. or process. This course would allow them to go away after they've attended it with the key areas, the key fundamentals mm. that are involved in project management. So it will start off with initial
initiation. It will then look to do around planning. It will talk around the sort of controlling elements. Mm. We we'll then look to do around the implementation, and then right at the end, it will then do the close. So it will cover those main key processes yeah. and what's involved in actually covering those key processes. And my name is Anthony Francis, and I've just been on the Silburn TV. Uh, I'd like you to subscribe uh, either via their hashtag, their website or their Instagram. Hi, thanks for watching our video. If you like what you see, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and share and like. And don't forget to comment, but first subscribe.